Hi, fourth graders. It's Miss K here with Unit 2B, Lesson 22. And we're going to learn about the Classical Age today, which is a time period where there was some really cool architecture going on in Europe. So our first vocab word is descended, which is a verb. And that means to have a specific family or person among one's ancestors. Prosperous is an adjective, which means successful. Flourish is a verb. It means it was successful and widespread. Courtyards is a noun. Those are yards that are open to the sky but closed on the sides. Subtly is an adverb, and that means in a way that is complicated but also pleasant. Storehouses are a noun. Those are warehouses, places where things are stored. Manuscripts, noun. Those are books or documents. Geometric is an adverb, and that means patterned with shapes. Imposing, adjective, meaning impressive. Graceful is an adjective, meaning beautiful or elegant. Inspired is a verb, produced a feeling or thought in someone. Awe is a noun, a feeling of being very impressed. Inscribed is a verb, which means engraved. Interlocked is a verb, which means connected. Infinite is an adjective, going on forever. Expanse is a noun, which means a large, vast, open space. Elaborate, adjective, fancy and detailed. Tranquility is a noun, a state of calm. Intertwined is a verb, which also means connected. And spiral is an adjective, which means long and winding. So we're reading chapter 14. The big question for this chapter is what was life like for Muslims during the Islamic classical age? In the 740s, fighting broke out again in the Islamic empire. Shias, who still followed Ali, continued to rebel against the Umayyad Caliphate. This time, the Umayyads were defeated. Only one member of the family survived. He fled to Spain, where his family continued to rule under a new separate caliphate. In the rest of the Muslim world, a new dynasty emerged, that of the Abbasids, descended from another member of Muhammad's family, his uncle. The story of early Islam might sound like one of constant battles, but it was actually very stable compared with what was occurring in Europe and everywhere else. The Abbasids ruled for 500 years, moving the capital from Damascus in Syria to Baghdad in modern-day Iraq. Under them, the Islamic empire was very prosperous. Art, science, mathematics, and architecture flourished. This period is known as the Islamic Classical Age. During the Classical Age, the Islam world was much wealthier and more scientifically advanced than Europe. Jews, Christians, and Muslims coexisted in great cities. They lived in houses with courtyards and fountains and dined on subtly spicy foods. Their homes were filled with goods from across the empire and beyond. The classical age was possible because of the size of the Islamic empire. Muslims were able to take ideas from different parts of the world and merge them into something completely new. Knowledge in the Classical Age. The Abbasid Caliphate was a magnet for scholars throughout the empire. Regardless of their religion, Persians, Greeks, Indians, and others flocked there. Baghdad became one of the greatest storehouses of knowledge in the world, particularly of old Greek texts translated into Arabic. As well as translating ancient Greek and Roman manuscripts, circles of scholars worked together and debated one another. Logic and reasoning were an important part of Islam, and that extended to the field of science. With so much knowledge at their fingertips, scholars made countless scientific, philosophical, mathematical, and other discoveries. These contributions were often years, decades, even centuries ahead of developments in other parts of the world. Okay, this is showing a drawing explaining a different phase of the moon. This is a physician learning a, a complex surgical method. And this is a drawing of a mechanical device. Okay, we've got some more pictures here. This is the Grand Mosque in Dubai, number one. 
Number two is an interior view of the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. And the third one is showing Islamic arches. Mosques. A mosque is the name for an Islamic place of worship, similar to synagogues for Jews and churches for Christians. Over the centuries, there have been many great mosques built throughout the Islamic empire. Many share common characteristics. All mosques have a mirab or prayer niche pointed to Mecca. This is the direction in which Muslims pray. Many mosques have minarets or tall towers used to call people to prayer. Calligraphy and geometric designs are both common features in mosques. Okay, we've got some more pictures here. This is an architectural drawing of the Hagia Sophia. Uh, number two is a door of a mosque in Morocco. So it's a mosque door. And number three is some Islamic tile work in Morocco. Architecture. The Islamic world created some of the greatest architectural masterpieces of all time. Just as European Christians built great cathedrals, the Muslims built great mosques. The Muslims wanted their mosques to be beautiful, imposing, and noticeable from far. One of their greatest innovations was the pointed arch. A pointed arch is very graceful, but it also bears a lot of weight. You can build higher using one. Other arches the Muslims developed were used for beauty. The ogi arch in the form of an S shape, for example. As well as arches, many mosques had great domes, like that of the Dome of the Rock mentioned in chapter four. From within the mosque, people might have looked up in the huge dome and felt as though they were looking at heaven. The domes inspired awe in the worshipers. Geometric patterns were central to Muslim architecture, perhaps because some Muslims did not believe in representing Muhammad's face. Other decorative elements were emphasized. Artists inscribed squares or triangles inside circles and interlocked the figures into patterns that could be repeated near endlessly. These patterns were intended to remind their viewers of the infinite expanse of the universe. Another commonly used architectural pattern was the arabesque. If you were to go to a wealthy Muslim home, you might see courtyards with fountains and elaborate gardens. These created a sense of peace and tranquility. The arabesque was based on the observation of gardens with elaborate patterns of intertwined plant stems and a variety of leaves. These patterns reflected both the natural world and the gardens of the heaven that Muslims believed God had created for them. The Great Mosque of Samarra was built by the Abbasid Caliphs in the 9th century. Its enormous spiral minaret, constructed entirely of baked brick, towered over the city. And that is right here. The Hagia Sophia in Istanbul was originally a great church built by the Byzantine Empire Justinian. When the Muslims conquered Constantinople, they converted the church into a mosque, covered the many frescoes of Jesus, Mary, and Christian saints, and added minarets, calligraphy, and a mirab. The Hagia Sophia is now maintained as a museum, inside of which you can see the combination of Christian and Islamic design. And that one is right here. All right, so here are your questions for this chapter. Number one is true or false? I'm sorry, is yes or no? Were the Shia able to defeat the Umayyads? Number two, what country did the last remaining Umayyad flee to and rule? Number three, which caliphate came into power once the Umayyads were defeated? Number four, is true or false? The new caliphate was unstable and did not last long. Five, Jews, Christians, and Muslims lived side by side in large cities. Number six, how were Muslims able to gather ideas from all over the world? Seven, which piece of architecture shows the different ideas from all over the world? And number eight, Baghdad was very isolated and did not have much knowledge. All right, have a wonderful day. Be sure to go back in that text and find the answers, and I'll see you next time. Bye, Adams.